Alright family, I wanna I got a question for you. What type of circle are you in? Are you in a survival circle or are you in a living circle? Because I'm evaluating my circles. Right? And we're gonna get into this a little bit in Kumba, right? Um but today's topic is there is no success in halfway dreaming. Well, there's no halfway dreaming. Alright? Stay tuned. The toast is kind of long. I'm just coming back from the future to tell you. The toast is long. Once again, I, I go in. But hey, if you want to get through it, go up to about 33 minutes. Alright? Peace. Here's the show. So as my daughter say, let's get started. So we want to remember um, our family. We'll remember those people that lifted us up. So we're going to ask them to be present. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out, bring them out. Bring them out. All right. So, as y'all saw yesterday, my daughter Sasha got up. <laughs> and came down to kind of do the thing with us. But I got some, uh, uh-oh, uh-oh, hold on. Uh, Brother Kwame says, Family reunion keeps me busy this week. When I, When is a good time interval in which to reach out to you in the coming week? Well, you know I'm in the office from, uh, like nine to five. So you can reach out to me almost during any of those times. Like right after the Daily Toast is kind of rough because um, I'm cutting up the video and stuff like that. So um, hit me up. Yeah, because I got your message too. Um, um, I've been kind of rolling my mind around with some ideas for you. Um, but then also we need to go and talk about the location because I, I want to know if y'all coming over to the school or what we're going to do. All right. So hit me up during between nine, between nine and nine. You know what I'm saying? Um, and like I said, call and then stay by your phone because you know I usually will call you right back. You know, so here we go. Got to get that water, fam. It's important that we drink this water now. According to some of the information, okay, according, okay, OSU Extension Center. So we got to think about what we're going to do um, for some of the young people. But you want performances. So um, for those that don't know, uh, Brother Kwame is talking with me about 
a celebration called Queen Mother's Queen Mother Maya Moore's Day, right? Um, for those that don't know who Queen Mother Moore is, you can look her up on the internet. But she she has served. Um, she let me just put it this way: she was somebody who kept the history. <laughs> Queen Mother Moore. Uh, was with Garvey. I mean, uh, you know. So, and some of us had the pleasure of of meeting her. I well, actually, I never got to meet her. Um, for some reason, every time they brought her to the Africa Center, I wasn't around. You know what I'm saying? But um, but she was like somebody who not just kept the history, but actually was involved with the history, right? Yeah, yeah uh, uh, brother Kwame say a female no more acts. So she she actually was there for a lot of the stuff that um, most of us was studying at the time you know what I'm saying so if you want to know about um, really uh, what was going on with Garvey's organization Queen Mother Moore was there you want to know kind of what was going on during the time when Malcolm X was around Queen Mother Moore was there you know what I'm saying so we we got these people um, in our community that was in the shadows of a lot of lot of great things you know what I'm saying because we got to understand because we could focus on the Malcolm X and the Martin Luther Kings and the, and the Marcus Garveys and the Frederick Douglasses but what we got to understand that there was people behind these people that was that was basically holding them up right and and by us not celebrating these people by us not accessing these people and just being starstruck because we need to get out of this whole starstruck mentality you know what i'm saying that's why once again i'm bringing it back home i'm bringing it back you know boom all right because we pour libations for all these famous big name people now we need to pour libation for ours you know what i'm saying because your 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 grandparents might have not been in the garvey movement you know what I'm saying? But they might have been impacted. Or for all we know, they might have been an influence on some of the stuff that was going on then. Right? Some of us don't even know what our family connection was to, that, as they call them, the black Wall Streets that were all over the country. Or what black towns. Or how did you end up in the city where you are right now? Many of us don't even know our family history. Right? So, um... The reason I'm doing this is, one, I want to encourage you, one, to really start doing your own personal research. See, because a lot of y'all, a lot of us, we, we, we will spend time researching the hell out of strangers, but we won't research the people we know. You know what I'm saying? To really see um, how, how life impacted them. Because how life impacted them demonstrates how they impacted you. You know what I'm saying? Because you know people be having this nature nurture piece. We know there's a there's a balance because we come from a concept of my art. There's a balance of nature nurture, right? So the the piece that you have to understand is how did the nature, or the society, or the times, how did that influence the people that raised you, right? Why, why, why was your family so X? You know what I'm saying? Why would you know what I'm saying? When I say X, that's an unknown variable. You could throw anything into there that you want. I know you know that, Kwame. You know, um, but some somebody out there might not know that, right? So why was your family so X? You know what I'm saying? Why was your family so Y? Why was your family so Z? So did you get a better understanding about you, right? Hell. You know what I'm saying? If you look at the diseases, like as they tell you, if you look at the diseases that have taken out some of the men in your family and you're a man, there's a good chance that you could be running across some of those diseases. Same thing with women. What are the diseases in your family? Right? And then you can start isolating the factors that caused it. Now, one of the things as black folks we got to understand, one reason a lot of our people is getting, getting sick, is the food, yes, but we are under constant stress. And let me tell you, that tears your system up. Slowly but surely. But let me go and drink my water, alright?
I'm sorry, Brother Kwame. You know I get off into my little, my little rants, you know. Ounces down. I'm gonna throw both of those away because they leaking. You can't be a brewer with leaking water buckets, you know, water jugs. It's not no good. Yes, it is. Sometimes it do. Sometimes it do. But I do it all the time. I just I, I'm approaching my 50, so <clears throat> another eight ounces, fam. different yesterday I'm not gonna run out of water today so I am doing the bitters as you'll see I've been killing the bottle I've been killing it I've been killing it now one of, one of the good parts about um, um, bitters is that it supplies natural energy nourish, nourishes bone Protections relieve inflammation, create good cholesterol, boost antioxidant levels, decrease water retention, control and lower blood pressure, reduce allergic tendencies, and improves vision, improves digestion, decrease inflammation, improve brain function, the immune system, improve skin complexion, and help balance good sugar levels. Damn, I didn't mean to read all that. I was looking for something. Help balance the blood sugar. You know what I'm saying? It, it kind of, and then it curbs, it curbs the desire for sugar. You know what I'm saying? Really, it does. I'm trying to tell y'all this this bitter stuff, bitters, bitters, family, bitters, not just bitters. You know what I'm saying? But the bitter in life, right? You know what I'm saying? We need to go and sample on some of that. We need to sip on some of that bitter. But I'm taking the bitters along with uh, my brews because if you let them sit long enough, they turn to bitters, basically. So vinegar is considered... I got I to gotta look and see if vinegar is a bitter. You know what I'm saying? Um, if anybody out there, you know, you get, you got access to the internet, can you check and see if vinegar would be considered a bitter? Or is vinegar his own thing? Alright, I'm about to do the bitter. Here we go. Ah, family, 30 days. I gotta go get another bottle. But I'm getting used to it now. Somebody else joined us. I want to thank you. Um, throw a thumb up or say something so I know who it is. We just want to make sure it ain't the FBI or CIA, you know. But if it is, welcome. <laughs> All right. Yesterday we finished up our cherry. Today we're going to finish up the grape. <sighs> Never can say goodbye. No, no, no. I, I never can say goodbye. Thank goodness I got a whole nother batch brewing.
This is nice and mature, family. When, now, now I want to make sure that when y'all drinking that ambrosia, all right, when you drinking it, all right, I want to make sure that you're doing the proper steps. Check it in the light, even though I got a blue glass. Look at it in the light. See if you see any life floating in there. Check out the how gassy he is. You know what I'm saying? Smell. So that you know, start knowing what you're drinking, right? A lot of times we just trust in these companies. I don't want you to trust me. I want you to really, really start to get intimate with your stuff. Now, when you start getting your own Scobies, like some of y'all out there is, is ordering Scobies, right? When you get your Scobies, I want you to get real personal with your Scobie, right? I want you to get your Scobie a name. My Scobies got names. Now, since they all come from the same line, they all got the same name, except for the one that I that I created up there that's getting strong right now, right? I call that one um, a different name, but the batch, this batch, the uh, Scoby that made this one, this come from the batch of Amas, right? Cause them girls was born on them girls was born on Friday. Say, oh, some push-ups, damn it! All right, I, I gotta catch up on my push-ups. You know what I'm saying? They was born on Nia. They was born today, right? On on this day and this energy right here. Right, and this is what's crazy about the Scoby. Right, once again, I keep on trying, to, and I want y'all to really think about the importance of this. Right, Scobies are living things, and they form a symbiotic, symbiotic relationship. When you have your own Scoby, that Scoby begins to produce for you what you need, but you just got to be specific with it. You got to, you know what I'm saying. You got to go on and touch. You can't be afraid to, to touch it, pick it up. You know, and when you're brewing, you are creating something, especially for you. I mean, that's that's how dope these things are, right? So, we're going to toast our creator by whatever name you choose. Call that creator. We call on that great force. We call it into our presence. Even though it's already in our presence, we recognize it. And we toast that creator by whatever name you choose. And we say, Hashe. From there, we move to our personal ancestors. Man, our mothers, our fathers, our uncles, our aunts, our brothers, our sisters, our friends, our cousins, our nieces and nephews, all of those people in our family line that have made the transition, we want to salute them. We want to take time to research them. We want to take time to remember them. Right? Um, we want to we want to stand proudly on top of our family pyramid, right? And be able to look over the work that our personal ancestors have done. Some of us are fortunate enough to have, um, to be able to live in houses that were built and owned by family. You know what I'm saying? Some of us are fortunate enough to have stuff passed down to us, books and especially Bibles, you know what I'm saying? Go through the Bible and find some of the notes that some of your um, ancestors left, right? Um, um, some of us were left clothing by some of these people, you know what I'm saying? Some of us was, uh, I mean, some of us left change. Now, and I, I want to be very specific about this family. If your grandparents, especially grandparents, Maybe some of y'all might be old enough for your parents. If your parents kept change, right? Don't just go and cash that change in. This is why. Because if your parent is older than 60 and they've been keeping coins for the last 40, maybe 50 years, and you go and you just cash in them coins. You just robbed yourself. You just robbed yourself. Right? Because you didn't go through the change and you didn't check the dates. 
Now, just for your information, ancestral information, coins before 1967, quarters, dimes, quarters, dimes, half dollars, and silver dollars are one, almost 100% silver. I think before 1966, 66, 67, right before I was born, right? Now, so if you take a dime, that's a 1967 dime to the bank and they give you 10 cent, you just got cheated because that's a tenth of an ounce of silver, which is worth, if you say a tenth, take a tenth of $15. That's about 1.5, that's a dollar fifty that you just gave away, right? Because you ain't want to go through your what your ancestors left you. You know what I'm saying? Because some of us be hurt. You know what I'm saying? Because we be we be missing their presence. We be missing their wisdom. We some of us miss their cookies, right? Some of us miss the the, the breads that they used to make. You know what I'm saying? Some of us, my grandmother used to make beets for me, right? And I, and I, up to this day, I love beets. I remember when I first started, I didn't like them. You know what I'm saying? But it's it's information and stuff like that that we need to go on and talk about because that feeds our ancestors. That strengthens the connection between us and our ancestors, right? And at this time, and no other, I mean, we definitely need to strengthen the links between us and our ancestors, fam. So we toast those ancestors, those grandmothers, those grandfathers, those fathers, those aunts, those uncles, those cousins and friends and those nieces and nephews that have made their transition. I, I'm going to go down my family line today because I already did a little spill. So we're going to go and say our shade. From there, we toast this moment. moment. The day is near. The day of purpose, right? The day is near. So we toast near. And we lift up our glass and we toast this moment because in the moment is when our, ha when our life happens. It never happens in the past. never happens in the future. It only happens in the moment. So if you want to grasp your power, stop waiting for tomorrow. Stop crying about yesterday and get your ass in the moment and get busy. I lift up my glass to now and we say our shade. From there we toast our children. Our children's children on to infinity, right? We toast our children. We celebrate them now so that they can celebrate us when it's our times. So we lift up our glass and we say our shade. From there, I toast you. Any special toast that you need me to do. If you have any ancestors that you want me to shout out, feel free to put them on the timeline. Put them in the timeline. You know what I'm saying? Uh, YouTube, put it down below. If you have any special um, occasions or special things that you want me to toast while I'm doing this morning toast, I'll gladly do it. It's a special time for us. Um, Sometimes we got to be selfish. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we got to be selfish. So Sometimes we need to go on and toast us. We need to lift the glass up for us. That's why we're here, right? That's why we're here. That's why we do this on a daily basis, man. Um, Shouts out to Brother Kwame. Thanks for sharing, my brother. Um, but, you know, um, sometimes we got to be selfish with our prayers. Sometimes we got to be selfish with our toast. You know what I'm saying? And this is your opportunity. If there's anything that you need for our circle, because this is a small, intimate circle that gets up and do this, right? That you need for our circle to toast. Feel free to post it up there. This is what this time is for. We don't call the creator and the ancestor into our presence. And the one thing that I always had a problem with as far as libations with black folks when I'm doing it with my family is that people don't take it serious. It's almost as if, you know, it, we're just doing it, you know, not really realizing that when we ask the ancestors to come, they come. We brought them out. We brought them out. It's real. We ask the creator, it's real. The energy is here. So if you got something you need, lift up your glass and ask for it. Or post it up, I ask for it for you. All right? So let me go and drink some of this mature grape.
Good God. Now, hit my detox brew. Let's have a little bit for Kumba. So we done made it all the way through our detox brew, fam. It changed again. Great day, Mr. Mateen. All right. All right, so today on YouTube, I'm going to be talking because I, I, I filmed it yesterday because I got hit. Um, and I just, like, I got hit yesterday. Um, I walked into a store, fam, and uh, I was checking out. And as I went up to the counter, um, a young man spoke to me. You know what I'm saying? This blew my mind. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm not used to that. This little brother said, Good morning. Now I know I know some of y'all probably like wonder why I'm shocked about that, right? You know, I'm at a school. I mean, my kids don't really say good morning, they just come up and give me a hug, right? Or or whatever. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Mr. Brown? Blah blah blah. You know what I'm saying? This young man said, Good morning. I said, Damn. Uh-oh, we got some manners in that. Whoa. I said, yo, man, what school you go to? So, I'm not going to go through the whole story. Well, anyway, after leaving the conversation with him, the, 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 the idea came upon me to talk about halfway dreams and how we as a people teach our children and have been taught to halfway dream. You know what I'm saying? And, and in these halfway dreamings, we rob ourselves, right? Because we always got, we, ha we have always been told, have a backup plan. Have a backup plan, right? Have a backup plan. I got a question. What was the backup plan for the pyramids? What was the backup plan for Tim Timbuktu when we built it? Hmm. What was the backup plan for the UNI UNIA? When Marcus Garvey started his, his thing. What was the backup plan for Tuskegee University? Hmm, I know Richard Pryor had a backup plan. I know he wanted to be something else. What was the backup plan? What was their backup plan? What was Joe Jackson's backup plan? Those that don't know who. See, we, we have been programmed to prepare for failure rather than mastery. So we halfway dream. You know what I'm saying? We 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 send our children out on quest to achieve things with failure in mind. You know what I'm saying? And we call it protecting them. But I'm I'm see because this is one of the things we tell we tell our kids. And I want y'all to really think about the, the logic of this shit. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Thank you for sharing. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Think about that shit. Now, I, I happened to go to a farm. And I never seen a farmer go to the hen, go to the chicken, the, the chicken roots or whatever they call it, with two baskets. Never. Now, I ain't been on a farm a lot, and maybe some of y'all some farm boys or farm girls out there, but I ain't never seen a farmer go to the chicken coop with two baskets. What kind of logic is that? That sounds stupid to me. You know, one basket is just in case. And then let me ask you this. So, you got two baskets. You ain't putting all your eggs in one basket. You got extra baskets with you, right? 
and you spread the eggs out in all the baskets, right? What's to stop you from dropping one of the damn baskets because you got too many baskets, right? Wouldn't it be wiser just to take care of the one basket? See, because even if you put them in multiple baskets, right? Even if you have multiple baskets, what if one of those break? Oh, you got the other baskets out there. But you still suffer the consequences from the basket breaking. See, this is why I talked about bitter yesterday before I talked about this. The answers to be lining stuff up. Y'all got to understand, man, there's an energy moving here. The ancestors line this up because I wasn't even supposed to be in that store. Right? I wasn't even supposed to be there at that time in the morning. I went to the store because my wife asked me to do something for her. I'm usually on my way. I would never have been there. But this issue popped up right after I got done talking about the bitter. Right? Many of us teach our kids not to deal with the bitter in life. We teach them to avoid the bitter. Go on, make life all sweet. Hmm. Right? You ain't got to suffer. You ain't got to struggle. But what type of life is that? What do you get with somebody that don't struggle and suffer? What do you get? Have anybody have y'all ever heard the story about the the the, the cocoon? And the, the, the butterfly and the little boy. And the little boy had the little cocoon. And he 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 watched it and he watched it evolve. He watched the caterpillar go into the cocoon. And this was his caterpillar. And he just watched this damn thing. And he, he watched it evolve. He watched it go from the caterpillar to the chrysalis and he watched it transform. And he was so excited for his butterfly that when the butterfly started breaking out and he saw the butterfly struggling, he cut the butterfly up out of the cocoon. He helped it. And when the butterfly came out, the butterfly was basically undeveloped. Because it's the struggle of the butterfly coming up out the cocoon that helped force the blood or force the fluid into the wings so that the wings can develop. It's the struggle in life that makes us better. It's the suffering in life that makes us better. It's the bitter in life that makes us better. The sweet don't do nothing but make us sick, make us sick and weak. You know what I'm saying? I mean, just I mean, just look at how all of I mean. Uh, yeah. Listen, <clears throat> it's just in recent days that poor people start killing themselves, family. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, y'all, some of y'all could be mad at me for saying that, but it's just this recent shit now with all this media and shit that poor people really start killing themselves. I'm just saying, because when you born to struggle, when you used to struggling, struggling ain't shit. It's usually somebody who's not used to some shit, used to any type of struggle that's killing themselves. And now we want to raise our children without struggle. Are you kidding me? <sighs> I'm sorry. Another 31 minute toast. Damn. I'll be, I'll be sliding in and out of reality. I'm sorry. Alright, so. So I won't even go into this. I guess I have to go into this tomorrow. Alright, family. So. I'm out. Facebook, y'all have a great, great, great day, all right? Make sure you drink your bitters, get you some ambrosia. Those that want to start brewing ambrosia, my fault, you can't brew ambrosia, but you can brew your own June kombucha. I can help you with that, all right? But you can't brew that ambrosia, because I brew that ambrosia, right? Um, those that want to get some ambrosia, you know what I'm saying? Go on support. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, brother Kwame. Hey, but those that want to get the ambrosia, make sure you hit me up, right? Support the journey. The journey supports you because I got a batch coming out. Uh, and two.
two gallons already gone. Two gallons have already been pre-ordered. You know, so just putting it out there. Sulfur bitters. Oh, I didn't. I didn't do. I, I gotta look up the sulfur bitters. What's up with the sulfur bitters? But bitters are good, man. Our bitters are good in in liquid form and in life. Get some bitter. You know what I'm saying? Get some bitter. Don't become bitter. Just you know because. It makes it makes life so much sweeter, you know what I'm saying? Because you got you you compare and contrast. All right, but yo, I'm out. Peace, Facebook. Yo, take it easy. All right, YouTube. I'm about to let you go. Get you into the second part of the discussion. I filmed this yesterday. All right, so I might have covered some of it. <laughs> Y'all know I be I listen, I'll be I'll be going in. But I made it a little bit different. But <clears throat> I go a little bit more in detail in the next section. So y'all gonna see me in clothes and stuff like that, because usually y'all see me in, in my gear um for uh for early morning, alright? But now here we go. So stay tuned. checked into work and the idea for what I'm gonna talk about on Nia is here it hit me I went to the store I went to the store and um, I had to do I had to do um, a service right so I went to the store and I bought something I shouldn't bought and I, you know I, I'm still struggling like all of y'all out there we all got something we struggle with but this so happened that while I was in the line a young man of about 11, um, about 11, um, no, he was older than 11, let's say about 13, 14 years old, maybe 15, I was talking to him, and uh, before I could speak to him, he looked at me and he said, good morning, sir, I said, wow, I said, good morning, you know. I mean, it's sort of a blessing for me to run into a young man who, who who speaks. You know what I'm saying? And especially say something like, good morning nowadays? Wow. I said, damn, I'm impressed, young man. I said, what school you go to? He told me what school he went to. And I'm, well, I said, because it it, it's a special school um, where kids go that are focused, right? I said, well, what is what are you focusing on? He said, I want to be an actor. Now, the older woman that was at the cash register, you know, she was smiling at, at our conversation. She didn't say nothing when he said it was after. She just got back to scanning my stuff. But then he said, just in case that don't work, um, I think I'll be a lawyer. And she said, yeah, yeah. And I started thinking about it from that point. And I told him, I said, listen, you, I know you heard the statement, don't put all your eggs in one basket. He said, yeah. I said, well, it was one rich guy that said, put all your eggs in one basket, but watch the basket. Right? And I walked out, and this thought hit me. Halfway dreams. Halfway dreams. Many of us are suffering from halfway dreams. What do I mean by halfway dreams? Right? Halfway dreams are dreams that we had when we were young. But because of fear or because of what other people would say, because of other people's ideas, we didn't pursue them dreams. So they was halfway dreams. They was just here. We never actualized them and made them concrete. As a young person, dreams are like wings and they allow you to fly above the madness. It allows you to fly above a bad household. It allows you to fly in school when you're being picked with or fly through bad grades, dreams help elevate you. But as you start getting older and you don't pursue the dreams, the dreams turn from wings to weights. They hold you stuck in place. They hold you in depression. Now, the, 
the reason I want to bring this to you is because many of us as adults are living halfway dreams. When Martin Luther King gave his speech, he didn't say, I have a halfway dream. When Marcus Garvey was doing his thing, he didn't have a halfway love for black people. He didn't have a halfway dream of where he wanted them to be. When 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 a Booker T. Washington opened up Tuskegee Institute, he didn't have a halfway dream. He was truly committed to his dream. When Frederick Douglass ran for freedom, he didn't have a halfway dream of being free. The dream was real enough for him to pursue it, even at the risk of his life. See, many of us, and this goes back to what I talked about this morning or for those that's watching this yesterday. This goes back to what I was talking about yesterday, the bitterness. Many of us have been so conditioned for sweetness. We want sweet in our, in, in our coffee. We want coffee with our sugar. We want coffee with we we want cough, coffee with our sugar. We want pop with our sugar. We want spaghetti with our sugar. We want we're not consuming the other things. The other things are the sidebar. The main thing is the sugar, and the sugar is the sweet. We only want the sweet. We we don't even want we don't even want the fruit that the sweet come in. We just want the fruit. We want the sweet. And we we are living our life like that. This is why I'm telling people on the Ngoo Saba Challenge, those that are new to this, start getting some bitter in your life. Start tasting the bitter so that you can get the physical. Because when you take something bitter, when you take a bitter herb, right? No sugar, just straight bitter herb, right? It wakes something up in you, right? It's not just the caffeine that wakes the motherfucker up from black coffee. It's the bitterness of that coffee that gets the blood flowing. It's the bitterness from, from straight black tea or straight green tea that gets everything moving. We have to, we have to start training ourselves and training our young people to accept the bitter and move and pursue their dreams. Because when you're pursuing a dream, it's definitely bitter because you got to get the bitter before the sweet. You got to get the bitter. That's the only way you get it. Anything you're good at, there was a bitter point. A bitter point. A point where you, right, couldn't do it. And it was bitter because you messed up, you couldn't do it. Whether it was math, whether it was physics, whether it was a, a, some type of class that you were struggling with in school, whether it was making a speech, whether it was uh, uh, making a video, whether it was doing a podcast, whether it was writing a blog, whether it was um, um, getting on social uh, media, whether it was pursuing your goal in your job or your career or whatever you have, whether it was starting a business. All of y'all know that bitter has to come in. We try to protect our kids from that aspect of life. We try to protect ourselves from that aspect of life. But that is a major, major important thing that we have to start striving and learning how to hang on to and how to embrace. Because it's only through the bitter that we can recognize the sweet. Some of us got it good and we can't recognize it because we haven't been in a bad situation. Have you ever been with somebody like that? Somebody who has it good. You walk into their house, the shit is immaculate. You step in their car, the shit is immaculate. But yet they're depressed and they're sad. Because they don't have nothing to compare and contrast what they have. You on the journey, you, those of you in G&J, we starting with absolutely nothing. Nothing. I want y'all, let me, let, let me even get more personal with you. I constantly tell y'all this, but I need y'all to really understand this. People think I'm crazy. I'm sitting in my office during my break. I'm recording. I'm talking to my damn self. I put the video up. I might get about 10 views. I put the blog up. I might get 26 to 50 views. I do a podcast. I might get 20 views or, or 20 listens or uh, 10 downloads. People think I'm crazy. I'm wasting my time. But this is the bitter, fam. This is the bitter. Because when success starts trickling in, as it slowly is, right? As it slowly is, 
See, one of the things I, I taught myself a long time ago, I came up with this rhyme. And it says, if it come fast, it don't last. If it comes slow, it's good to go. And those that know, when you do something and you trudge along, and it's a trudge, it's, it's a death march. It's as Gex Klein used to say, freedom or death. What is your freedom? What are you willing to lay it down for? See, many of us are, we, we had these dreams, and these dreams come to us as gifts. Ambrosia was a gift. Y'all got to understand, man, for a long time, I, you know, I was like, I want to make my wine, boom, 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 for years. And then I heard a book. I bought a book, and I, I, I listened to the book. I said, well, damn, I could do this. And I started brewing, and then I got the SCOBY, and, and you know, I, I'm with the SCOBY. My wife seeing me pick up something strange. She's like, dude, you crazy. What is that? I'm playing with it. I'm talking to it. I'm telling it what I need. Put it in and it start booming. It start growing. It start coming to life. And the first, the first sip, when I got the first sip, I said, I'm on to something. I'm on to something big. Like right now, every morning, I'm getting up, I'm writing. I'm not writing scripts because I do this all freestyle, but I'm writing blogs to go along with what I'm doing. Why? Because this is my dream. Ending, ending diseases that are related to the gut in my tribe and developing and building a media company. Y'all laugh when I got my daughter in front of the camera, right? But she saw me and she copied me. So I'm trying to get my kids to start finding their dreams now because they will not have the lead, the, the, the leeway that I had. I was able to throw away my 20s. I threw my 20s away. Some of the people that's Ohio State with me can test it. I threw my 20s away. My kids won't be able to afford that because we're living in a time where the press is so greedy and so outright with it that they will flaunt their millions and billions in front of you. And they will take money from companies that are supporting good people, the people that would rally to their defense. I have never in the history of the world, maybe with Rome, experienced, I, I'm old, maybe with Rome, never experienced a level of greed as such, here, where you will disseminate the class or the group that protects your wealth, that manage your wealth, that helps you maintain your wealth, that helps protect your property, how you can let them fall into poverty. That's the time we're living in. The only thing that's going to get us up out this poverty. Is that a gray? Is that gray hair? What is that? Yeah, that's great. I love it. I love my hair cutters. Barbara laid it out, man. But anyway. Y'all want to see the little part. Right? Anyway. I've never experienced this. So the only thing our kids can do is dream. So family, check this out. When you find a young person with a dream, motivate them. Even if you don't necessarily agree with the dream. Push them. Motivate them. Mothers and fathers, if your child have a dream, that dream now becomes your dream. Right? I ain't saying stop pursuing yours. What I'm saying, if your child say they want to be a scientist, explore some science with them. They want to act, get the video camera out. Help them form a YouTube. They want to write, sit down and read their writing. They want to read. They want to be a reader. Because there's people making money doing that. Y'all know that, right? I buy audible books once a month. I buy a book every month. And I'm not alone. There's millions of people buying books. And there's individuals that read those books. They get paid. And they do exclusive voiceovers for books. So there's money in reading. That's going to be one of the projects that I'm working on. But first, let me, I'm going to solidify what I'm doing with that ambrosia. Then we're going to get into the other aspect of the media not just me getting up on here and writing and doing my freestyle but actually having scripted material over a podcast having scripted material and doing little shows on youtube i'm not playing 
this you did listen this shit right here social media without me making a dime i already recognize that it's a weapon and it's the weapon that i was born to throw around to, to have to use to master and i'm gonna master this shit regardless of who say because i ain't halfway dreaming fuck a halfway dream a halfway dream turns into a weight that holds you down and keep you stuck in your life my fault not even life because if you don't have a dream and if you don't pursue it you're not really living you're not living family you're just existing and taking up space so pursue your dreams all out this brother out to my mouth Thank you for watching the video. I want you to subscribe. Click the bird right there. The fiery bird. And I also have a special video just for you. Right there. And for those that want more information about Jamie Journey, go to our site. It should be right about there. Peace.